little bit. Welcome to class, everyone. It's Monday, October 19th, and we're ready to go. So start finding your seat. So that means coming forward in your chair seat. So uh, you're towards the front edge and you get to practice being tall. So do a lift through the crown of your head and try to find that tallness. When you do this, there's an automatic lift of the chest. It just feels so good. Then we're going to start with our foundation, our feet to make sure our alignment is good for seated mountain pose. Start having your feet parallel, uh, hip distance apart and toes straight ahead. Align the knee over the ankle. So that means you have to do a little glance down, but then pull yourself up tall again after you're sure of that knee to ankle alignment. That ensures the femur bone into the hip socket. Press down into your feet to feel the floor. There is stability. Now, the second place of stability is your sit bones. So remember to press down into the sit bones. Now, sometimes there's some added padding back there that you might have to move some of that padding away to feel the bone. So press down again into those sit bones. Do another lift. Extend through the crown of your head and find that lift of the chest. Begin to roll each shoulder back and feel the sensation of each shoulder blade roll, sliding towards the spine. Hands can rest on the thigh. Now bring your head back a little bit to find alignment in the cervical spine as well. Chin is parallel to the floor and you're looking straight ahead. Now straight ahead means you're focusing not so much on your screen, but on a, a point that's at eye level in front of you. Then close your eyes and take a deep breath. And as you release that exhale, keep the lift of the chest. Go to your normal breathing pattern. Try to relax the shoulders. Remember, they're rolled back, but they shouldn't be tense up by your ears. You might even see that the shoulder blades are gliding down your back ribs towards the back waist. Now bring strong focus to your breathing the action of inhaling, the action of exhaling. And as you continue to breathe softly, you'll find some calmness and stillness encompassing you, capturing you. We're going to begin to transition. Slowly start parting the eyelids and let them begin to focus and adjust to the light in the room. We're going to start with our neck exercises. So lower the chin down to your chest and give that back of the cervical spine a good morning stretch. Then draw the chin slowly away from your chest, bring it forward and then lift it up towards the ceiling. You'll start feeling the skin on the front of your neck getting tight. Allow that to happen as you gaze upward. Try not to have any discomfort in your neck. Sometimes you've gone too high and you need to lower down a little bit. 
you decide. Now let's slowly lower that chin back down towards the chest. Give that good morning stretch again to the back of your neck. If you lower your chin further towards the chest, maybe you'll feel some extra stretching toward the upper back muscle, the trapezius. And one more time, bring the chin forward slowly and then lift up towards the ceiling, keeping the neck in comfort zone. Feeling the tightness of the skin on the front of your neck, getting a massage in that thyroid gland as we do our neck exercises. Then lower the chin just halfway down and look straight ahead. Not so much at your screen, but at that point that you focus on in front of you. Lower the right ear down to the right shoulder. Experience some stretch on the left side of your neck. You can drop that right ear down even lower if you choose. Maybe extend the left arm at shoulder level to the left side, pointing the fingertips towards the left. Release and bring your chin back to the center line. Allow the left ear to fall to the left shoulder. Experience some stretch on the right side of your neck. Maybe you'd like to lower that left ear down a little more. Maybe not. You know you're in control. You manage how your body feels today. Maybe you'd like to lift that right arm up at shoulder level, stretching the fingertips to the right side. Maybe not. It's all right. And then lower that hand down and bring your chin back in line with the sternum. Turn your head and look over the right shoulder. Use the right effort here, don't go too far. It's an easy good morning stretch. You, you might feel some squeezing. And then bring your chin back to center. Turn your head and look over the left shoulder. Keeping that tall mountain pose. Sometimes I just caught myself uh, rounding the back a little bit. Feel a little squeeze, but don't overdo it. And bring your chin back to center. Perfect. Let your chin lower to your chest again and bring your hands to that ridge at the back of the skull, the occipital ridge. And you can use your hands to apply some more pressure. That gives you some more stretch at the back of the neck. Then release your hands and slowly lift your chin away from the chest. We're going to do one more neck exercise, pinpointing the sternum at the center line of your body and the right shoulder. Turn your head and then lower the chin between those two points. You can look at your arm or the floor, the carpet, and get that back left corner of the neck. Lift your chin up slowly and bring your chin back to center line. Now between the sternum and the left shoulder, turn your head slightly and lower the chin in between those two points. Feel the back right corner of the neck getting a stretch. Then release, bringing the chin up and moving the chin back to center. Perfect. So now lower the arms down to your side and let's wake up the shoulder complex, starting with the shoulder joints. Bring them up towards your ear and lower down up towards your ears and lower down. Two more at your own pace, please.
Now let's do another shoulder shrug, but rolling both shoulders back behind us. You'll use your arms slightly. So lift those shoulders up to the ear first. Roll both shoulders back, moving the arms behind you until you squeeze those shoulder blades together and then rotate those arms for, back to forward position. Shoulders up to the ears and that shrug and then roll the shoulders back using the arms to help squeeze those shoulder blades toward the spine and open your chest some more. Let those arms rotate back to uh, beginning position. Do two more at your own pace. Remember, we're doing the shrug first and then rolling the shoulders back. End with just one more, please. Perfect. Extend the right arm out at the right shoulder and bring it across your chest. Take your left hand and hold on to your right wrist. Concentrate on the upper arm of the right arm. So bring that upper arm in a little closer to feel the deltoid muscle over the sh right shoulder joint. Then gently release and bring that arm back. Extend the left arm to the left side. Bring that left arm across the chest, taking your right hand to hold on to that left wrist. Concentrate on the upper arm as you bring it in closer towards your chest. See if you can feel that deltoid muscle working. It should be working on this front side of the shoulder, the top, the back side, down towards the armpit chest. It covers a lot of territory and then release. Finding the tricep muscle now, extend that right arm forward and lift it up. Bend your elbow and take your hand to the back of your head, neck, where the spine is in the middle back body or to the shoulder blade. Now your elbow may be down like this and don't worry, it's fine. Just take your left hand to that tricep and stroke to the elbow. I'm going to lift mine a little higher only because I can without discomfort and I'm stroking up to the elbow. It's a nice massage for that tricep muscle that helps us in all kinds of activities. Try one more stroke up. Hold it there for a moment and then release down. Extend the left arm forward, please. Bring that left arm up, bend the elbow and bring your hand to the back of your head, your neck, the middle of your back where the spine is, or maybe you can move your hand to the shoulder blade. All those options are perfect. Now remember your elbow may be down long, down low, just take your right hand and stroke that tricep muscle to the elbow. I'm going to lift mine up a little higher only because it's done without discomfort and I'm bringing my hand to that tricep and just stroking up. And then lower that elbow down. Now our shoulders and arms should be ready for doing a hug. Extend those arms out to the side reach through the fingertips and see if you can feel the length starting at the shoulder through the upper arm to the forearm and the fingertips. Now cross your arms in front of your heart. Bend the elbows and hold on to your shoulders. What a nice thing to have a hug first thing in the morning. Lift those elbows up any amount that you can. That opens the arm to chest a little bit and then lower those elbows down to your tummy and round the upper back, pull those shoulders towards the floor. And then lift those elbows back up to shoulder level, release your hands and extend out again. Reach through the fingertips, find the length. I can't remember which arm I had on top of, maybe you can. <laughs> and try to do the other cross. 
Now this cross for me will be the odd one. So I'll know, yes, I did it correctly. This is very odd for me. So if you have your uh, hands on your shoulders, that's fine. But some of us may be able to hold our elbows in or the wrist or forearm. Go where you can manage. If you're holding your shoulders, maybe the elbows can come up. Well, wherever you're holding, forearms, upper arm, wrist, opening the, elbow, uh, the armpit chest, and then letting those elbows come down right to the tummy. Bring those hands, if your hands are on your shoulders, pull them down, round the upper back, pull the tummy muscles in. Oh, we're stretching the fascia and all the muscles. It's feeling good, feeling good. Lifting those elbows up, releasing hands and shaking it all out. Okay, so we're also going to do airplane attendant. Maybe Joanne saw this happening as she arrived or she was backing out to travel from the tarmac. We're going to extend those arms out again, sitting tall, restore that tallness, and bring your right arm across your chest to the left. That's really working that deltoid muscle. And then swing your arm up towards the ceiling and then return it to shoulder level. Three more times at your own pace. Cross the chest with the right arm, swing it up, and out to the side. Two more times without cues. Last one. And rest those arms for a moment. I think the left arm was working harder than my right arm. <laughs> All right. A little rest here and then extend the arms again. This time the left arm is coming across the chest. So bring that left arm across. Then swing it up and bring it back to shoulder level. We have three more to do. Here's the next one. Cross left deltoid muscle working hard and then bringing that arm up and bringing that arm down to shoulder level. Do two more at your own pace. And then one more. And lower those arms down. I tell everybody else to have a belt and water. And what do I have? None of those props. <laughs> you need your belt. Luckily, mine is very close. I'd like you to restore your seated mountain pose. Hold your belt, one in each, um, hold your belt, both hands on the belt, but separate the hands about what you might perceive as shoulder distance apart, and then extend your arms in front of you. So I try to even off my belt, and then I grip the belt, and pull as if I'm going to tear it apart. Of course I'm not because it's cotton and it's very strong, but I feel all the muscles in my arm, arms beginning to contract and I'm gripping harder and harder in my hand. So the forearm is really contracted hard. I feel a little bit in my upper arm as well. Now lift up slowly, overhead or wherever you can go, Think about opening the armpit chest and then lowering back to shoulder level. So do three more at your own pace. Are you still gripping with your hands? Do you still have all that muscular tension in your arms? I know I can't hear you, but I know I can uh, think that you're saying yes in your brain. <laughs> All right, now maybe slide those hands out a little bit more, not all the way to the end of the belt, but further apart than shoulder distance. And pull hard, pull hard. Now I feel the triceps getting into the picture here, including all the arm muscles. 
can you go up and over your head again? Only where you can manage and lower down to shoulder level. Let's just do one more up and over the head. Oh yes, now stay there. Can you go back further? My body is telling me, uh, maybe and then we have to stop <laughs> and then bring your belt all the way down and put it to the side excellent now let's worry about the hands the wrists and the fingers extend both arms forward and interlace those fingers touch thumbs cross pinkies stay just like this or flip the palms if you choose now once you flip the palms press into the index uh, finger mount so you're pressing forward. Draw the elbows in a little more so you have a bigger bend at the wrist. And of course, fingers are squeezing together and that's why they're changing colors right before your eyes. Now, if you choose, stay here or up and over your head. Press the palms to the ceiling, keep the shoulder blades, from lifting up towards your ears by pushing them down, pushing them down, and then lower the arms down, flip the palms if you did so, check which index finger is on top, and change the interlace so the other index finger is on top, and once again touch thumbs, cross pinkies, and flip the palms. Draw the elbows in, that makes a bigger bend in the wrist, Press into the index finger palm forward and squeeze those fingers together. Stay here or choose to go overhead again. Drop the shoulder blades down. They always go for a free ride. That's because they're the only free moving bones that I know about in the body. Oh, I didn't pull those elbows in. Okay and then lower your arms down, flip the palms, release the interlace, and shake those hands out. Okay, so now we're coming to our six spinal actions. Let's make it a compound movement today. Remember, find your tall seated mountain pose. We'll begin with the rounding of the back and then launch into the arching of the back. So first sit tall, then lower the chin down to your chest. Pull the tummy muscles in and feel your shoulders falling forward. Observe that the front of your chest is short, the torso, the upper torso is short while the back torso is long. Then bring the chin forward and lift up so the whole torso gets involved now let the shoulders roll back. Feel the lift in your chest as you gaze upward. Imagine someone's fists being pushed right between your shoulder blades. Then round the back again. Return to the first movement, rounding the back, bringing the chin to the chest. Observing the shortness of the front of the chest. Then extend your chin forward, lift up the chin towards the ceiling, roll the shoulders back, feel that fist in between your shoulder blades. Feel the openness of your chest and all those little muscles on the sides of your rib cage and the obliques are all working for you. Then lower your chin halfway down to look at the focus point right in front of you. Not so much looking at your screen, keeping the neck in good alignment. We're going to proceed to stretching the side rib area and twisting it. Another compound movement today. So I'm looking at my alignment and trying to find that tallness extension of the spine and taking the right hand to the right side of the chair. I'm going to lift that left arm up and then start to lean to the right. When you lean to the right, 
Focus on that left sit bone pressing down as well as the left foot. Don't let them get light in weight. Even pelvis. Now by stretching the left obliques and the intercostals, you're helping to keep those muscles toned for work with the diaphragm. Let that arm come back up and lower that arm down to hold on the left side of your chair seat or armrest and lift the right arm up. Press into the right foot, right sit bone. Don't let it come up and lean over to the left side. Oh my goodness, I must have done, we did a lot of yard work yesterday and this side of my body is feeling a little more tender than the left side. So I'm thinking I reached for something in my tall height way. <laughs> and maybe I overreached. Oh. And then bring that arm right back up and lower that arm down. Oh, I was gonna make this a compound movement and I forgot. Ah, it would have been so nice. <laughs> All right, so now we're coming to the twist. All right, right hand holding onto the chair seat, bringing that left arm across the chest. Now this is a slight twist. My eyes are looking at a little bit of an angle here instead of straight ahead. So you could stay here or restore, restore, everyone should restore that tallness. Take an inhale. Press lightly on the outer right knee as you bring the left side of your body over to the right. Now, don't let your head move. Use that lower belly, that lower rib cage, that left shoulder. The chin stays in line with the sternum. All this twisting is so good for you. Slowly release and come back to center. Left hand to armrest or chair seat as the right arm comes across to the outer left knee. Now I'm turning my head so the chin is in line with my sternum instead of looking straight at the camera. Restore that tallness in your spine. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, if you wanna go further, start with the lower belly, go to the lower ribs, go to the right shoulder for this twist. Twisting is ever so good for us. And then release, unwind, and come back to center. Perfect. All right. So we have some tummy muscles to come to for their wake up. <laughs> Take hands to your armrest or chair seat and return to those knee lifts. Now they're not really high and you can go higher if you choose. But one at a time, and you don't have to go at the pace I'm going at. You could make it more meaningful. That's what a good teacher would tell you to go slower. Try one more set. Good. Now, you can continue with that single knee lift, or you can bring that right knee towards your chest take the hands to the shin and draw that knee in closer. So you're getting into the hip, lower belly, thigh, uh, quadricep I should say, hamstring, and let's rotate the ankle here. And if you're just doing single knee lifts, just hold that one uh, knee up and rotate that ankle in both directions. And then lower that foot down. Now remember, you can continue those single knee lifts, or you can bring that left knee up and take your hands to the shin and draw that knee in for a little more tummy um, stretching. Hip, quadricep, hamstring, and rotating the ankle right here. Both directions. Good and then lower that foot down. We'll come to our change lounge position where we lean back in the chair and roll the shoulders back so our chest is broad and open. Holding on to the uh, armrest or chair seat, try a low bicycle. 
Whoa, my knees really did a little noise making here. Go slowly. Let the quadriceps walk or wake up. I guess my knees are waking up today. And then try reversing the pedaling. And then lower those feet down. We're going to come to a sit up. So that means we'll, from our chaise lounge position, we'll lift up, extend the arms, pull tummy muscles in, stretch, and then come back to that chaise lounge position. So the breath on this is taking an inhale right here. And on the exhale is the action, pulling tummy muscles in and reaching forward. Knees are bent, feet are on the floor, and then come back to the backrest. One more time. Take an inhale, and exhale, pull tummy muscles in, extend forward, reaching through your hands, fingers, and then inhale, exhale, pull tummy muscles in and come back. Perfect. Lower your arms down and we're going to come to our legs. We've been doing some leg movement already, but we're going to add on. Hands under the right thigh, bringing that right knee up towards the chest and extending the lower right leg. Press into the heel to feel the calf muscle and then point your toe. Press into the heel, point the toe. Now press into the heel and hold it here. See if you're observing some gripping in the knee, some contraction in that right thigh. And then point your toe. It's still holding a little bit in those muscles, but it relaxes a little bit. And bend your knee and lower that foot down. Hands under the left thigh, bringing that knee up and stretching the lower left leg. Press into the heel. Oh, there's that calf muscle and then point the toe, press into the heel, press harder so you feel that calf muscle, and maybe you can observe the grip in your knee and contraction in your left thigh. And then release and lower that foot down. We're getting our belt again, please. And now we're going to use that femur bone head that's in that hip socket to extend and rotate out to the side and uh, then maybe feel that stretch of the hamstring. Slide your right heel forward, please, and take your belt around the middle of your shoe or foot. I always even mine up. Uh, I guess I'm an even kind of person. <laughs> Walk your hands down the belt so you can flex in the heel and pull on the belt and feel that extreme calf muscle stretch. Sit tall as you lift that heel away from the floor up to hip level and lower down to the floor. Three more times, please. But keep pulling on the belt. Keep flexing into the heel. The leg bones are in traction. Could this be number three? Mm, I'm going to say here's number four. And then lower down and transfer the left side of your belt into your right hand. Make the left hand hold on to your armrest or your chair seat and sit tall. Press into the heel and pull on the belt again. Lift that leg up to hip level. Now the femur bone is helping us to move the leg out to the side, rotating in that hip socket. Aren't we lucky that we have that happening? The body is a mechanical genius. Okay, come back in again, go out, and then lower the heel down and lift up. Lower and lift. Keep flexing into the heel, keep pulling on the belt. Do one more, please, lifting up and swinging back in. Take your left hand and hold on to the left side of the belt. Do the same with the right hand on the right side. 
flex in the heel and pull on the belt again. Get that, all those bones in traction. Stay here or lift up. I can't go too far today. I feel that uh, back of the thigh muscle, hamstring, and then lower all the way down to the floor. Well, that feels good. Okay. Side. Slide that left heel forward, position your belt, pull on the belt and flex into that heel. Calf muscle is extremely stretched as you grip the knee and contract that left thigh. Sit tall, lift that left heel away from the floor to hip level and then lower it down again. Three more times, I promise to count. I think I did good. <laughs> we'll take the right side of your belt into your left hand while the right hand holds on to the armrest or the chair seat and making sure your spine is extended to the crown of your head. Then pull on the belt, flex into the heel, lift up to hip level again and swing out to feel that inner thigh muscle. And the wonder of that socket with the femur head on it are we lucky? Swing out one more time and lower the heel and lift it up. Lower the heel and lift it up. Lower the heel, lift it up. Here's the last one. Swing it back in. Stay here if you want. Or put one side of the belt in each hand. Pull on the belt, flex into the heel, grip the knee, contract the thigh, and lift up if you want. Only if you want. Oh, I'm feeling it already. And then lower that heel all the way down and take the belt off. Put the belt to the side. We're coming in. Um, no, we're not doing that yet. We still have a stretch for the hip and the inner thigh. And that is the piriformis stretch. Sometimes it's called figure four. In this figure four, you, your hands come under your thigh, you lift the knee and take the ankle to the right thigh. It's really the left one. If that's not available, cross your ankles at the floor, right ankle over left. You'll take both hands to the inner knee, whichever option you chose to do, and slide your hands down to the inner right thigh and press that knee out. Again, the femur bone is working but it's working some of the muscles in a different way. So we're working that piriformis muscle, the one that um, if it's not nice and long and toned up, it interferes with the um, filtering through of all those nerves. Now, if your leg is, uh, you can stop. If your leg has your ankle on your left thigh, I'd like you to take both hands, bring the knee up and give it a hug. So this right knee can go towards your left shoulder and you'll feel big stretch right here in that hip and a little bit in the glute. Now, if you have ankles, keep holding. <laughs> if your ankles are crossed at, uh, at the floor, then I'd like you to take your hands under your thigh and lift that knee up. Okay. And then release all of it and we'll do the other side. Perhaps you'd like to put your hands under your thigh, lift the knee up, catch the ankle and put it on your right thigh. Or you know the other option, crossing ankles at the floor. Everybody take your hands to your inner left knee and slide down to the inner thigh and press that knee away from you. Right away, I'm feeling some stretch in that hip already. It's also stretching that piriformis. Now, if your knee is up here, take your knee, hands around your left knee and pull it toward the knee towards the right shoulder you'll get lots of stretch right in this area. And remember, if you have ankles crossed, you're lifting the knee up. 
lower your foot down and now we can go to goddess pose so that means we're bringing our uh, legs to the front corners of your chair seat and we're sitting tall now I have to go out a little further for me to feel that inner thigh and I'm pressing the inner knee out to the back uh, outer knee so I can feel that stretch more then sitting tall I'm going to bring my arms at shoulder level extended out flipping the palms and coming to cactus while my knees are pushing um, from the inside to the outside and I'm trying to maintain the stretch right here in the inner thigh I'm going to do the same thing with my arms I'm pushing the inner elbow to the outer elbow towards the wall behind me it's not it's a great stretch for opening the chest but I can't go too far I'm feeling a little stuck in this area so I'm bringing the elbows forward and then uh, while I was focusing on my elbows I forgot the knees so one more time press the inner knee to the outer knee keep it there and press the inner elbow to the outer elbow okay now I can feel it in both and then release lowering your arms and bringing your legs back in we are ready for warrior two so warrior two is once again bringing the right leg out to the right corner of your chair seat the foot is angled slightly so your knee is going in the same direction position your left leg in the same way but slide it out a bit now with that leg um, sliding out you have a bend in the knee and you have full stability pressing down into that left foot now I'm always concerned about the chest so first let's find tallness extend through the crown of your head and today well you know warrior two does this but we're not going to do that part today we are going to and let me turn around and show you you stay in that position we're going to take the hands behind us interlace them to open the chest in warrior two now if you can't hold on to your hands behind you just have your arms extended behind you that would be fine and you'll feel the roll of the shoulders behind you okay so we have the legs we're feeling a stretch in the inner thighs we're pressing inner knee to outer knee and even though we extend as we lift up through the side ribs we're going to bring those arms back and interlace and open the chest ah those shoulders have rolled back maybe you interlace hands maybe you don't maybe you hold on to your backrest maybe you hold on to the back of your chair it's all okay now feel that openness because here comes the next action we're going to release the hands keep that open chest as you bring your arms in warrior two style and then look over your right arm I'm hoping you feel a difference in the front of your chest being tall and open and then lower your arms down and rest Whoa, that was hard work we're going to do the left side bring your left foot in because this knee is going to be bent over the ankle while the right leg is stretched out have your right foot on the floor with a bend in the knee your left knee is over the left ankle so first on your own find that tallness on the sides of your rib cage then extend the arms roll the shoulders back and bring your hands together behind you in an interlace or just extending open hands behind you and keep lifting up now release those hands once you have that open chest go slowly so it doesn't collapse and then look over your left arm 
I'm hoping you feel a difference in the chest. Now I just saw my left knee leaning in. So I'm pushing it out again. Then lower your arms and bring that right foot in. Shake those legs out. At least mine were working really hard. Okay, now we're going to do triangle pose with the open chest. Your feet again at the corners of the chair. Extend both legs out. Now I have knees bent, both feet totally on the floor. Now this is a little harder, so lift up through the side ribs to start with. Roll the shoulders back and interlace your hands behind you. Then release the hands, but keep the open chest Take your left hand to your hip, keeping that left shoulder back. Release your right arm and bring it down to the right shin. And keep that left shoulder back and maybe extend that arm. So we had to do a few movements there. And then lower that arm and slide the right hand up. Okay, roll the shoulders back again. Extend the arms, roll them back behind you to interlace those hands and lift the chest and release the right hand, keeping that right shoulder back and the right hand on the hip. Then bring the left arm forward to the left chin, lean a little bit, and then extend that right arm up. It, it's so different if we start with that chest opened up and then lower that right arm, slide that left hand in, and now walk those feet in. Take drinks of water. We're going to stand up, do Tadasana in chair pose, and then we're doing a squat. And then some balance today. Ooh, our time is going quickly. We'll see what we can get done. All right. I will adjust the screen. Stand behind your chair. Okay, now you can't see my feet. We got the head in view. <laughs> Let's see. What will that do? Oh, that will really give you no head. Okay, you, at least you can see part of my head. <laughs> Stand into Dasana. So what does that mean? It means be behind your chair so your hands can hold onto the chair. You start with your foundation, start with your feet about hip distance apart, have toes straight ahead. Then let's find even distribution of weight over those feet. So first, press down into all four corners of your feet, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner and outer heel, and really press down. Feel the effort. Then check the distribution of your weight. So you don't want to be at your heels, moving your body towards your heels, or have weight in the balls of your feet, but somewhere in between. Now, when you find that, Lift the insteps a little bit and feel the outer edges of your feet. Those are very important edges. Then come up the shin to the kneecaps. Grip the kneecaps like you did when we had the belt on our foot and lift the kneecaps up as if you can imagine that and feel the contraction of those thighs. Now push the thighs back, the front thighs go to the back thighs and roll the inside of your thighs to the back wall. That's alignment. Pull tummy muscles in, lift through the crown of your head. Remember you're holding on that chair if you need to and roll your shoulders back. Extend your arms down to your side unless you're holding on that chair. And if you're not holding on the chair, rotate the upper arm so the palms can face forward. And there is your whole alignment of your body. Now your eyes should be gazing at that focus point on the wall, not down at your screen, but keeping the two parallel 
Sorry if you heard that. It was a call. Oh. All right. So press into your feet, lift through the crown of your head, draw those shoulders back, feel that openness of the chest. Perfect, everybody. Perfect. All right. Release it all and we'll come into chair pose. Now you can be behind your chair, holding on and standing tall in Tadasana. Then we're leaning forward. So think about that hinge at the hip. You hinge forward and then you bend at the knees. So let's take that again. Lean forward, bend at the knees, and already you're bending at the uh, ankle. Now press into your hands, into the backrest of your chair, and lift the chest up. Okay, that's a good prep. Now come out of it and we'll go back in that prep, but maybe lower the buttocks down a little more. That's all up to you. So start hinging forward, then bend the knees, let the ankles bend also, and I'm holding on to the chair. Now perhaps this is where you stop or maybe you go down lower. It's all up to you, but you pull your tummy in, you tuck the tailbone under and let the shoulder blades slide down your back ribs. Your hands are on the chair and you're lifting the chest up. Maybe you extend an arm, maybe you don't. Maybe you try the other arm, maybe you don't. Maybe you extend both arms. Chair pose. Do you feel those quadriceps? They're happy. Press into your feet. Straighten those knees and then lower your hands down. Remember, on anything like that, you can always hold the chair, forget the arms. All right, the squat that I promised you. Now, remember that goddess pose that we did on our chair where the legs went out to the corners of the chair seat? That was like doing a squat. So behind your chair right now, center yourself, come into Tadasana, and then walk your feet maybe as wide as the legs or wider. Now pivot a little bit on those heels so the toes angle out. Check that when you bend your knee, your knee is going in the same direction. And then do your first squat. Holding onto the chair, coming down where you feel you can go and come up again. Practice two more, please. Keeping a tall spine and coming back up. And here comes our last one, coming to that squat and then coming back up. Now, I noticed my knees were coming in a little bit towards the chair. So just like you did in goddess pose, you have to keep those knees apart. So do it one more time. Focus on the knees pressing away from each other. Oh, that time I felt more stretch in my inner thighs also. Good. So now we're going to do the squat and uh, add on. So just watch. Here comes my squat. And then I lift up and lift my heels off the floor. I straighten my knees. They're not locked, but just straight. And then I lower down my heels to come into a squat again. And then I lift my heels to stand on the balls of the foot. All right, let's try that. All right, position your feet, knees in the direction of your toes, pressing inner knees out, away from each other, lower down, tall spines, and then press into your chair as you hold on and lift the heels. Working the calf muscle in the back of the hamstring, uh, back of the quadriceps, the hamstring, and then lower the heels down, come down, come into that squat, spread those knees apart, 
and then press into your chair, start straightening the knees and lifting the heels. All balance poses. All right, lower those heels down and walk your feet back in. Ah, all right. So a little piece of balance here is doing a lunge and Urdhva Hastasana arms. Oh, this sounds too complicated, but it isn't. I'm going to much I'm walking to the right of my chair and I'm coming into a lunge. So just watch, right leg back, uh, forward, left leg back, and I make sure I'm on the ball of my left foot. And I'm wiggling it back a little bit, and then I'm bending into both knees. Now we'll do a prep where I'll have you come up and then go back down again, and we'll lift an arm and then maybe the other arm. So you have one foot totally on the floor, you have the ball of the left foot, on the floor and you're reaching up in Urdhva Hastasana. Now perhaps, and then you'll come up, perhaps you don't like both arms up. Have one hand holding on the chair and just have one arm up. Or place that hand on your hip. There's lots of choices you have for your arms. Okay, let's try it. Standing on the right side of your chair, holding on, bring the right foot forward and the left foot back. So maybe you don't like lunges. So maybe this is where you stop. If you do want to try the lunge, then you uh, come to the ball of your left foot and then keep the left heel up as you lower the right left heel, knee down. Now I'm holding onto the chair. My hand is on my thigh. I could have it on my hip. Now maybe you'd like to try an arm up. Maybe you'd like to try the other arm up. Maybe you don't want to do this at all. It's okay. But my left quadricep is saying mama to me. <laughs> Lower the arms down and bring that foot forward. All right, go on the other side. So now the left foot goes forward. Right foot back. Now maybe this is where you stay. It's fine. Maybe you choose to bend your knees. So you pivot on that right foot and you bend that right knee down towards the floor any amount and you stay on the ball of your right foot. Heel is off the floor. So I have my left hand on my thigh or I could put it on my hip or it could extend it up. You could also test yourself out for some more balance by having your right arm up. Do you feel that right thigh, that quadricep is saying mama to you? Yes, yes, feel it. And then release, lower your arms down and bring that foot back. That was only the start of some balance <laughs> today. But anyway, we are at the stopping point. Uh, yes, we are. So come and sit down. Ha, huh, so we got squats in today. We got lunges in today. Tall spine, shoulder work. Wow, we accomplished a lot. And you worked so hard. Bravo to everybody. All right, now it's time to rest. We all look forward to this piece. <laughs> First, we have to find that tall spine again. So lift through the crown of your head, draw the shoulders back, open the chest, look at that fixed point in front of you, and then close your eyes. So when I looked at that fixed point, my chin is automatically parallel to the floor. So with your eyes closed, take that deep breath again. And then come back to your normal breathing. Return to stillness and calmness. Tall spine. Shoulders roll back. Shoulder blades sliding back down the back ribs towards your back waist.
the thighs might be pounding a little bit because they got lots of stretch today. That pounding is a circulation flow. So today's reading is about random acts of kindness. If my bookmark is in the right place, to become a kinder, more loving individual requires action. Yet, ironically, there is nothing specific you have to do, no prescription to follow. Rather, most genuine acts of kindness and generosity seem natural. They stem from a type of thinking where service and giving have been integrated into the person's thought process. The key is to remember that being of service isn't a one-time effort. It's not doing something nice for someone and then wondering why others aren't being nice and doing nice things for you. Instead, a life of service is a long, lifelong process, a way of thinking about life. For example, does the trash need to be taken out? If so, go ahead and take it out, even if it's not your turn. I always have to remind my husband this. <laughs> if so, go ahead and take that out if it's your, not your turn. Is someone you know being difficult? Maybe they just need a hug or need someone to listen to them. I have learned, now the author has learned that the best way to be of service is often very simple. It's those little, quiet, often unnoticed acts of kindness that you can choose on a daily basis, being supportive or just taking time and energy to listen. You've heard the saying, giving is its own reward. Well, it's really true. When you give, you also receive. In fact, what you receive is directly proportional to what you give. As you give more free, freely of yourself in your own unique ways, you will experience more feelings of peace than you ever thought possible. So everybody wins, especially you. Bring your namaste hands together at your heart. Let the intelligence of your brain bow to the wisdom you find in your loving heart. And to close our class, may you be healthy, may you be happy, and may you be safe. Lift your chin, open your eyes, smile, and namaste, my friends. Thank you so much for doing a great job today and coming to class. You have to unmute yourself. They don't give me a button to do that. Thank you, Noreen. Uh, thank you. You are thank you, fantastic. Noreen. Thank you so much for coming to nice class. Nice to see everybody. Good uh, to see you all. You too. Bye. -bye. I Bye. You have, a, have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll end the meeting now. You Bye, too, Noreen. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody.